Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Crystal Henry Show. Welcome to my kitchen where we serve up all types of recipes for success. I am a seven-time Amazon best-selling author of 11 amazing books, a coach of Made to Lead Millions coaching hub that helps you conquer your what ifs and create your what is. I am excited about our amazing title on today, our amazing topic, and this topic will help you get into position for your purpose and your destiny. Before we get started, I want to say thank you to all the underwriters of this amazing show and stay connected with me at crystalhenry.net. Now, with that being said, our topic for today is C-Test. C-Test. And I know you're like, what is that? We'll get into it. Wait, wait, wait. We'll have prayer first, but we'll be coming from Matthew chapter 8, 23 to 27, and Matthew chapter 14, 22 to 33. I need you to write those down because that's going to be your homework. So let's pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you and we praise you for being God. We thank you, Lord God, because you are an honorable God and we love you. Father, allow the words of your pages come to life in our lives, come up off the pages and give us life. Father, we thank you for this word on today, for what you've done in our lives and for what you will do. And Lord, we thank you for being God and God alone. Have your way. Let your kingdom come and your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen again. We'll see test. And I'm going to tell you the C is not S-E-E, -E, but it is S-E-A. When you get on the C, it's going to test your faith. And that's what we're talking about today. That is the topic of the day, C test. So go with me to Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from the New King James Version. And we're going to start at verse 23. And I'm going to compare the two times that God showed us um, our faith at sea. I I'm going to deal with the two times God dealt with us on the sea. So again, Matthew 8, starting at verse 23. Now, when he got into a boat, his disciples followed him and suddenly a great Temptus arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with waves, but he was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and awoke him saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. <laughs> but he said to them, why are you fearful? Oh, you of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Now, we're going to stop right there. That was Matthew 8, verses 23 through 27. So do you see what happened? They were at sea. They climbed aboard with none other than the most capable one, uh, the one from Galilee, the one that could calm the sea with his mouth, with his words. They were right there with Jesus, the Messiah. They were right there. But guess what? In this particular chapter, there was a story at the beginning of chapter eight of Matthew. There's a story of a leper. There's a story of Peter's mother-in-law who gets healed from a fever. Uh, there's a story of the cost of discipleship. And then it gets down to the winds and the waves. So I ask you this question. Why does this story have to 
happened after all of these encouraging stories of deliverance, all of these encouraging stories of, well, not stories, the encouraging history of deliverance. Why does that happen that we are tested after our faith is built up? How many times have you gone through and you've seen God work a miracle? God has allowed you to pay a bill that maybe you didn't think you were going to pay or get a job that you felt you weren't fully qualified for, or you were able to get a car or a house. God has built you up in your faith and then a test. A test on the water causes you to shake, causes you to tremble, causes you to doubt. What kind of test has come your way that has caused you to doubt, that has caused you to want to throw in the towel, that's caused you to want to doubt God and God all by himself? See, I'm a cancer survivor of many, many years, 13 years what was happening in my life at the time. Well, God was moving. He was blessing. Our ministry was growing. My son was getting bigger. Uh, my miracle son, God had blessed me with a miracle son. And then my water test was becoming pregnant. See, it was a miracle pregnancy. That was a water test because I thought I couldn't have a son. Then as my son grew up, years had passed. He was six years old. And then I got diagnosed with breast cancer, another water test. So God built me up. He built up my faith that should have passed the test without doubt, without wavering, without fear. What has God done in your life? I need you to get to your memory bank. What has God done in your life that boosted your faith, that stretched your faith, that grew your faith? What was it that God used to water your faith that caused it to bloom, caused you to be fearless and powerful and bold and confident that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it? What has God given you to strengthen you so that when the storm comes, when the waves come, when the rocking comes, what is it that he's given you that you should have more than enough faith, more than enough faith to conquer. See, I need you to tap into your memory bank. I need you to pull out your pen and paper and write down the areas where God has blessed you, how God has given to you, how God has um, blessed your family, how God delivered you, um, the ways he delivered you. When you think on all of those good things that the Lord has done, then when the storm comes, I need you to be strong. I need you to demand, declare, and decree for the waves to cease and the storm to calm. I need your faith to be storm resistant. I need you to be able to pass the sea test, the storm test. I need you to be able to pass it with flying colors. That's why God allows us to go through things, through. Yea, though I walk through the valley, through the valley. We say it so quickly. Yea, though I walk through, through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. See, the disciples had walked with Jesus. All of the history that they had had with Jesus, all the teaching and the training, the on-the-job teaching and training that Jesus was giving them, that when the sea came and began to rumble and the winds began to blow, I needed them to be strong. Jesus needs us to be strong. What did he say to them? Oh, ye of little faith. <laughs> oh, ye of little faith. I need you to understand that your faith is stronger than the storm. Your faith is stronger than the wind. Your faith is stronger than the rain. The, your faith is stronger than the waves. Your faith is stronger than that. The test 
is meant for you to pass it. That sea test as they were rocking in the boat was meant for them to pass it, was meant for them to overcome it, not to be afraid, not to automatically say, save us, we are perishing. Because that's what they said. Now I want you to look at this other example in Matthew 14, another example of a C test. What are we missing the test? Are we passing the test? I want you to get this in your spirit because it's time for you to pass the C test, to pass it. Don't be fooled by what you S E E, even though the waves might be roaring and rumbling, I need you to pass the test, okay? So let's look at Matthew 14. Again, in this chapter, we've got John the Baptist um, being beheaded, but he had faith all the way to the end. We see the 5,000 getting fed. Oh my gosh, the 5,000 getting fed with nothing, some scraps, some fish and some bread. And they fed 5,000. What a miracle. So all of that set up for this sea test. So here it is. Jesus tells the disciples in Matthew 22, he says, go to the other side. He sends the multitude away because he just fed the 5,000. So they should be able to make it back home wherever they have come from because they've been following Jesus for days and miracles. He'd been performing miracles after miracle after miracle. And the final one was feeding the 5,000. And so he sent them back. And then he tells his disciples, hey, I need you to go to the other side. That means you're going to get to the other side. Go to the other side. Why would he put them on a boat that wasn't going to make it? Why would God bring you this far if you weren't going to make it to where he told you to go? Why would Jesus give you a dream and you're not and you're going to die before it's fulfilled? Come on. No, he's not going to tell you what's going to happen and then cause you to die in the middle of it. He's not going to do that. Let's keep going. So he tells his disciples, go to the other side. Then he goes up to the mountain and he prays by himself. When he's done praying, it says in verse 24, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Matthew 14 and 25. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the water. The fourth hour or the fourth watch of the night is between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., the darkest time of night before the sun rises. And so he's walking on water, even though the winds are contrary, even though the sea is moving under his feet, he is walking on the thing that the disciples were afraid of in chapter eight. Come on. He's walking on the sea. This time the sea again is contrary. The winds are blowing. The waves are, are rough. <clears throat> his disciples are in the boat. This is in the dark hours of the morning. And Jesus is walking on the very thing that the disciples were afraid of in chapter eight. And the disciples are still afraid of in chapter 14. We have to grow in faith. Come on. And so they not, they're not only afraid of the contrary wind, but this is what they say in verse 26, Matthew 14 and 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they got troubled. Their heart began to palpitate. They got worried, like, what is this? What is this manner of thing? And they said, it is a ghost. They cried out in fear. Verse 27, but immediately he spoke to them. Like, really? A ghost? Come on now. He said, <laughs> It is I. Don't be afraid. Come on now. How many times does the spirit, the Holy Ghost, encourage us? Hey, hey, you don't be afraid. Calm down. We've got this. 
Let me tell you again, you're getting to the other side. Let me tell you again, you've got power and authority right here. You can speak to the wind and the waves and they will behave too. Because remember, they were in the midst of on the job training. You're in the midst of on the job training. Every time you pick up the Bible and read it, you're in the midst of on the job training because the Holy Ghost is working in you. The Holy Ghost is giving you revelation. The Holy Ghost is guiding you through the word. So I hope you're getting this. Be strong, be encouraged. Don't be afraid. When the waves come, you've got the power right here. Let's keep going. And so Jesus, Jesus was walking on the water. Peter saw the Lord and he said, command me to come. Jesus said, come. Peter stepped out the boat on the very thing that Jesus was walking on. And he started walking too. But when he looked down at the circumstance, remember I said, see test. We're in the middle of the SEA, but because of what we see, Peter started to sink. Because of what we see, we start to sink, right? But don't sink. Don't fall. Don't get entrapped. So then as he's sinking, he says, Jesus, save me. And Jesus reaches out his arm and pulls Peter out of the water. Whenever you are in high water, Whenever it feels like you don't know how to take it or you can't take it, call on Jesus and he will reach his hand down and pull you out of the sea. He will pull you out of a circumstance and he will be with you in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the circumstance so that nothing, no harm will come nigh to you. No harm will come close to you. You might feel like you're not going to make it, but that's the enemy's job. He wants you to feel like you're not going to make it. But God's job, Jesus' job is so that you might have life and have it more abundantly. His job is to pull you up, pull you out and save you. And so I hope this message on today saves you, pulls you out and allows you not to look at your test with fear, but trust that you have faith. Your history of faith has built you up to be strong in the faith. Do not fear. Don't be afraid. Jesus is right there with you, within you. The greater one is in you. So I hope this message encourages you about the C test. You have been tested many times, but you're still here. And I want you to be encouraged and do not be afraid. I am Coach Crystal Henry. We're in the kitchen. That is another success push, success to push you into your purpose, to push you past your fears and your doubts. I hope you enjoyed it from Matthew chapter 8 and Matthew chapter 14. Go back and study your word. But again, thank you to my underwriters for making this possible. I love you guys. And for all you amazing guests, remember, connect with me at crystalhenry.net and come back for more recipes of success. Until next time. I don't know about this. I mean, I want to do it, but, you know, I'm a singer, but not a singer, singer. I don't know about this. Baby, let me tell you. God gave you a gift, a voice. Use it. You get on that stage and you sing like you never sung before. I got faith in you. I believe in you. And I know you believe in yourself. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Amen? Amen. All right.
That's what I'm talking about, Lord. Thank you.